The House committee is set to hear from three FBI whistleblowers sharing their stories of retaliation and abuses they claim they faced at the Bureau. Special Agent Steve Friend is one of them. The people, the day he gets here, he learns that they suspended his clearance, said he, they questioned his allegiance to the country. A guy who did two tours in our armed services for our country, questioned his allegiance, won't let him get access to all his belongings, his clothes, his furniture. Four children, a two-week-old newborn, wouldn't let him get access to their clothes, their toys, their winter coats. That's how bad it was. Florida Congressman Greg Stubbe serves on that select subcommittee, and he joins us now to preview the hearing. Congressman, let me help you out with your first question in light of Jim Jordan's comment right there. How the heck does this happen to somebody who's serving the people of the United States of America in the United States of America? Yeah, it's really sad, the depth of corruption that is currently going on in our FBI and DOJ and the level of politicization that has occurred. And this is an individual who saw that they were not filing their own guidelines on investigating these cases and whistle blew to his executives and to his supervisors, which he's supposed to do pursuant to FBI rules, and they completely shut him down. They take away his security clearance, which then doesn't give him the ability to go out and get another law enforcement job and fire him. So you're not supposed to retaliate on whistleblowers. Director Ray has said that they won't do that. Merrick Garland has said that they won't do that. And that's exactly what they are doing is retaliating against whistleblowers who are blowing the whistle on the fact that they're going after conservatives, on the fact that they have politicized the FBI and the DOJ. Yeah, you know, don't get me wrong. These testimonies, they're 100 percent necessary. But will these testimonies be enough to move the needle to get these people who are potentially responsible to be held accountable? Because how many times have we seen these explosive uh, testimonies come out and then the story just vanish the next week? So is it enough? Well, uh, certainly enough for me. After I read a report that will be released this morning at 9.45 before a press conference that we're going to give at 8 a.m., uh, egregious abuse, misallocation of law enforcement resources, and misconduct at the highest levels of the FBI. And what it seems to have been uh, a fact now that will be in this report is statements that both Merrick Garland have made under oath and Director Ray have made under oath uh, are complete outright lies to Congress, which is a, an effect offense and a crime, and I think is impeachable conduct. So in reading the 80-page report that will be released at 745 this morning, I certainly have changed my mind on whether I think that both Director, Gar Director Ray and uh, Merrick Garland should be impeached. So to review, you think both of those individuals should face impeachment over this? 100%. Okay. Let's go into what so some of the testimonies expected to be FBI saying one of the whistleblowers set to testify staff operations specialist Marcus Allen quote espoused alternative theories to co-workers verbally and in emails and instant messages sent on FBI systems including an email containing a link to a website that stated among other things by now it's clear that federal law enforcement had some degree of infiltration among the crowds gathered at the Capitol on January 6th. The lines of questioning that you are expected to pursue will include January 6th, I'm assuming? January 6th uh, is a large part of this, how they've weaponized and exaggerated the numbers on domestic extreme terrorism. So they'll use what happened here in Washington and then add those numbers in the different field offices to exacerbate and expand the numbers based on what they not really are, basically completely misleading the American public on the level of domestic terrorists and domestic extremism cases that the FBI has. It's a number of different things. And one of the witnesses is going to talk about how the bureaus specifically going after pro-life pregnancy centers. I mean, this is 100 percent stuff you see in, in China, communist China, communist Russia. This isn't the type of behavior that we should be having in the United States. The, what, what the FBI has become is the law enforcement arm of the Democratic Party. You know, Congressman, we have to get to this because House Democrats, they're now attempting to work around Republicans to raise the U.S. debt ceiling through something called a discharge petition. So, you know, look, the facts are McCarthy put out a common sense plan over 100 days ago. The president's not moving on it. McCarthy even made the point that the president left the United States without coming to a deal. So what is the holdup? 
The holdup is the Senate and the White House not doing their job. We've passed a bill, so the Democrats can file whatever discharge petition they want. They're not going to get the 218 votes necessary to force a vote on it because we've already voted on a debt ceiling bill, increasing the debt ceiling, cutting spending, and putting in work requirements for the American people for social welfare programs, things that Joe Biden himself has supported when he was in the Senate. Uh, so we've already passed a plan. The Democrats can try all of this, but they're basically stalling. They're not doing what needs to happen for the American people to move our economy forward. The American people want us to cut spending in Washington, and that's exactly what we did in increasing the debt ceiling. Just quickly, is that a clear sign of their desperation that they're floating this discharge petition? Yeah, I think so. They, they, they have no other option because the Senate is refusing to pass a bill and send it to the White House. With that, we have avoided going into a wonky discussion of discharge petitions with Professor Stubbe, Strohmeyer, and Pyro. I say that is a success. Good luck today in your hearing. We need answers because that's not how America works. Congressman Greg Stubbe, thank you, sir. We Amen. appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.